Come on, everybody. Let's go. Get ready for a summertime adventure from another summertime story. This is the story of You Move, You Lose. Written and told by award-winning author Carl Summer. Once there was a young cub named Stubby. Bucky Beaver thought Stubby was the most stubborn bear in the forest. Ricky Rabbit disagreed. He thought Prissy, Stubby's sister, was the most stubborn bear. Papa and Mama taught their cubs about sharing and being kind to one another. But Stubby and Prissy would not listen. Stubby always wanted to have his way, and Prissy always wanted to have her way, or else there was trouble. What did Stubby and Prissy do when Papa and Mama tried to teach him? I, Claire? They didn't listen. They did not listen. Uh-oh. Do you listen to your parents? Yeah. And many children get into lots and lots of trouble for not listening. And we're going to find something now with this story, something that starts very, very small, and it grows and grows and grows and grows and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But what started was over here, right here, because they didn't listen. And sometimes just because you don't listen, your parents try to tell you something, no, nope. I'm not going to listen, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And they try to tell you over and over and over again, but some boys and girls, they just, nope, I'm going to do my own thing. And some, that little seed that has started, grows and mushrooms become something very big and they end up maybe ruining their lives, some children. And I've seen it happen in boys and girls, sad. But it starts because they didn't listen when they were young. When their forest friends came over to play, Stubby and Prissy would always end up fussing and yelling at each other. Why are you cubs so stubborn, Daisy Deer would ask. We can't have fun when you act that way. But Stubby and Prissy would never listen. So everyone would stop playing and go home. One day, Mama said, Papa and I are going outside to pick berries and nuts. If you need us, added Papa, just call us. We'll be nearby. Now be kind to each other while we're gone, said Mama. Okay, said Stubby and Prissy. Papa picked up a big box. As he left the house, he said, Would someone please close the door after us? Prissy, said Stubby, go and shut the door. Why should I? asked Prissy. You're the closest. Why don't you shut the door? Papa picked up a big box and then he said, Could someone please close the door after us? And I want you to notice now, just a simple thing. Could you please close the door? All right? And you're going to see something very interesting here. From that little thing, it's going to grow and 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 grow. And you're going to see a lot of trouble happening just because of someone having to close a door. And sometimes boys and girls, they argue from some little thing and they end up fighting and getting hurt even. Just because of some little thing down here because they didn't do the right thing here. Before they could decide on who should shut the door, their forest friends came by. Stubby, Prissy, called Bucky Beaver. Come on in, yelled Prissy. We're playing a game. Great, shouted Ricky Rabbit. We want to play too. As everyone sat around the table, a blast of cold air blew through the open door. Brrr, I'm cold, said Prissy. So am I, said Ricky Rabbit. Prissy, said Stubby, since you're now the closest to the door, why don't you shut it? Why should I shut the door, complained Prissy. You were closest to the door when Papa asked you to shut it. 
Papa didn't ask me to close the door, Stubby snapped back. He asked if someone would close the door. Someone could be you. Don't be lazy. You're the closest now, so go and shut the door. Don't tell me what to do, Stubby growled Prissy. And don't call me lazy. You are lazy and stubborn, yelled Stubby. I'm not lazy, Prissy yelled back. And I'm not stubborn. You're lazy and you're stubborn and mean. All right, what is happening here now? Deshaun? They're still fighting over who should shut the door. And what else are they doing here? Mercy? Calling each other names. Now they're starting to call names. You're lazy. Come on now, you shut the door. No, you were once before over here. You were closest before, now you're closest, and they're starting to have a big argument. And you find out that happens a lot with an argument. Because you're stubborn, you're not going to give in. We'll see what happens now next. Oh, no, groaned Daisy, dear. Here they go again, fussing, yelling, and being stubborn. Quietly, their forest friends left the house. Look, growled Stubby, our friends have left just because you wouldn't close the door. Well, snapped Percy, if you had obeyed Papa, we'd still be playing. Why did the friends leave? Olivia? Because Stubby and Percy were arguing. Yeah, they're arguing, fighting one another, calling each other names and lazy. Yes, you're lazy, no, this here. Would you like to be around friends like that? No. No, I, I don't either. I don't want to hear a bunch of arguing and people fighting with one another. So they left. So now they don't have any friends anymore. They were playing a nice game together. And now had friends leave. And said, so when you fuss and argue and fight, you don't want to be around people like that. And so here they are now losing their friends. Prissy could think of nothing else to say, and neither could Stubby. They climbed up onto the couch and stared at each other. Suddenly, Prissy got an idea. I'll make a deal with you, she said. Since we don't want to talk anymore and we don't want to shut the door, let's have a contest. The first one who talks closes the door. Better yet, challenged Stubby. The first one who talks or moves closes the door. Okay, snapped Prissy. You move, you lose. Stubby pointed his finger and growled, It's a deal. You move, you lose. What is happening now with these two bears? Claire? They're accusing each other for being stubborn. They're accusing each other of being stubborn. But they're stubborn. <laughs> each one is accusing the other of what they really are. You're so stubborn. And, and Prissy is calling stubborn. Yeah, you're stubborn. No, you're stubborn. You're hard-headed. You're this, you're this. And they're accusing each other of what they are. And then they have this here contest. The first one who talks will have to close the door. And if I say, no, Stubby says, we'll have it better. The first one who moves closes the door. So now they have to sit stiff. They can't move. They have to sit, you know, try to see who's going to move first. And so they have this uh, contest between one another. Who's going to be the first one to move just to close a silly door? So they have a miserable life sitting on that couch trying to have a, win a contest. But let's see what happens now. Stubby and Prissy made themselves comfortable. Stubby folded his arms and Prissy grabbed the pillow. Then they sat and stared at each other. No one moved or made a sound. Is he ever hard-headed, thought Prissy. But I'll teach him a lesson he'll never forget. As Stubby stared at Prissy, he thought, for a bear, she sure is proud and stubborn. But I'll show her I'll never give in. As the cubs sat staring at each other, two raccoons drove by. Seeing that the door was open, they stopped and peeked inside. Hello, they called. Is anyone home? Neither Stubby nor Prissy spoke or moved. It's clear, whispered one raccoon. I don't see anyone except two stuffed teddy bears. They walked in and went straight to work. One raccoon headed for the kitchen and emptied all the shells of dishes and food. The other removed everything from the bedroom. 
Is Stubby so foolish as to sit there and let those raccoons steal all our things, thought Prissy. Stubby never moved or said a word. Stubby watched as one raccoon took Mama's purse. Stubby was so mad that he almost yelled at Prissy. Instead, he grumbled to himself, I can't believe stubborn Prissy is going to let that raccoon steal Mama's purse. Mama is so close, but she won't even call her. The cubs quietly watched the raccoons remove every last item from the house except the couch they sat on. Quick, said one of the bandits, let's get out of here. In a flash, they left the house and sped away in their loaded down truck. Here the raccoons are stealing everything out of their house and none of them dare move because they don't want to lose that contest. That's how stubborn they are. And then they start to accuse each other. Why doesn't she do something? Why doesn't he do something? But why doesn't the one who's talking do something? That is what happens when you're stubborn. Your eyes become blinded. All you could see is yourself and you can't see what the other person is doing and you start accusing each other of the very same things that you should be doing. Prissy could not believe what had happened. That stubborn stubby let them steal my bed, my pretty clothes, and even my new doll. But she held back her tears and vowed, I'll never give in. Stubby was so angry, his insides began to shake. She did it, he fumed. She let them steal everything, our food, our furniture, Mama's purse, even my favorite ball glove. What are they doing to each other here? I, Kylie? They're accusing each other of letting the raccoons steal their belongings. Yes, they're accusing each other. And they didn't do anything. Either one wouldn't move. And they say, you should have moved. No, you should have moved. And they're sitting there mm, like wooden Indians, you know. They're not going to move because they don't want to lose that contest. That's how stubborn they were. Just then, the cubs heard a loud scream. <coughs> Outside their door, a hungry wolf was chasing a little lost kitten. Help! <coughs> help! cried the baby kitty. Please, somebody help me! The wolf sneered. I'm hungry, and I'm going to eat you. No one moved inside the house. As the wolf drew closer, the scared little kitten closed her eyes and screamed as loudly as she could. Help me, please, somebody, please help me. The wolf opened up his jaws wide and was just about to swallow his dinner when, wham, a bear claw smacked him on the side of his head, hurling him against a tree. The scared wolf did not know what hit him. He shook his head, sprung to his feet, and ran as fast as he could back into the forest. The kitten opened her eyes and smiled at the bear who had saved her life. It was Prissy. She had run out of the house to save the kitten. Then Prissy and the kitten heard a loud clapping sound. It was Stubby. He was jumping up and down, clapping his hands and shouting, I won! I won! Then with a great big smile, Stubby yelled, Remember, Prissy, you move, you lose. Come now and shut the door. Now look at Stubby. What is Stubby doing here? Jocelyn? He's jumping up and down and bragging. He's jumping up and bragging, I won, I won. And here's Prissy saving that poor kitten. It's interesting in saving that kitten's life from the wolf. And he's jumping down. He says, now, come on, Prissy, you close the door. All he cares is about winning. That's kind of funny, isn't it? And Prissy is being kind because he sees that poor kitty is going to be killed and eaten by that wolf. And she's willing to lose the contest to help that kitty. But Stubby, he's just, oh, I won that contest. I'm happy. Now go and close that door. That's more important. Let's see what happens now. Prissy and the baby kitten stared at Stubby. How could he care only about winning, wondered Prissy. When Stubby saw the scared little kitten, he stopped clapping and his smile disappeared. 
Just then the cubs saw Papa and Mama coming with a box filled with berries and nuts. Oh, no, moaned Stubby as he remembered the empty house. What's Papa going to say? We're in big, big trouble, said Prissy. Stubby and Prissy were scared. As Papa and Mama walked up, Stubby tried to explain, It's all my fault. I've been very foolish. I'm as much to blame as Stubby, said Prissy with a shaky voice. I was just as foolish and stubborn. Papa and Mama never said a word. They slowly walked to the door and looked inside. What happened, asked Mama. Stubby began to cry. I'm sorry, Mama. It's all my fault. Prissy wiped her eyes. We were foolish. We let some raccoons come into our house and steal everything. What is Stubby and Prissy doing now? All right, Emma? They're apologizing for being foolish. They're apologizing. They're sorry now. They realize, oh, we did a foolish thing. They're finally learning to say something. I'm sorry. You know, that's sometimes a very hard thing to do. When you do something wrong, to learn to say, I'm sorry. Some people are so stubborn, they never say those words. They're always right. I know people like that. They're always right. They could be dead wrong, but they're always right. And don't be like that. As a young child, learn when you do something wrong or someone shows you something that is wrong, say those two magic words, I'm sorry. All right? And if someone says that to you, always be willing to forgive them. All right? And Stubby and Prissy are finally learning that important lesson that they're saying, I am sorry. It's critical because some people in there, when, even when they're teenagers and when in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, they will never say those words. They're so proud. They're always right. And we're not always right. Learn those two important words to say when you do something wrong, I'm sorry. It's a wonderful characteristics of someone who's humble enough to admit when they're wrong. Papa put his arms around Stubby and Prissy and asked, Why did you? Just as Papa was speaking, a truck pulled up, loaded with food, dishes, and furniture. Get them, Papa, shouted Stubby. They're the ones who stole all our things. Yes, yelled Prissy. They're the ones. Just then the forest friends came and began unloading the truck. First the dishes, then the food, and then the furniture. Everything was brought back. Then one of the raccoons handed Mama her purse and Prissy a doll. The other one handed Stubby his ball glove. Was all this a joke, asked Stubby? Well, explained Ricky Rabbit, we saw you and Prissy sitting on the couch and acting stubborn. So we asked the raccoons to do something to show you how silly it is to act that way. The raccoons added, we told your dad and mom about it when they were picking berries. We hope you're not mad. What are the two bears doing now? All right, Noah? They're thanking them for teaching them how foolish, foolish it is to be stubborn and proud. Very good. They're thanking them. Now, here's a very, very important lesson. Listen to me, okay? Learn to accept correction. Now, my books have won. These books that you see over here in the CDs and the DVDs, have won now 60 awards, a very prestigious awards, all right? And it's not because I'm so smart. It's because I'm always looking for correction. These books go through many corrections. I give them to editors. I pay people money. I want red marks. You could say this, you could do this, but no, this is wrong. I want that. I'm always looking. I'm looking for ideas. I read books so I can learn, and you too, learn to want to be corrected so you can become better. I have a machining company. We're the largest in North America. Why? Because I study. My son and I have written a book, Complete EDM Handbook. We do electrical discharge machining. And I, I studied the, how, the, how it works. I have videos on YouTube describing how it works. All right? And so learn to want to be corrected. Your teachers in school are always correcting your English, your papers. 
Thank him. Look at them. Your parents correct you. Thank him. But unfortunately, some children, I don't want to be correct. They're stubborn and proud. And some will suffer their whole life because they're not willing to be corrected. And so I've learned that important lesson long ago in life. And now I've become, some would consider me very successful. But it's not because I'm so smart. I use other people who are much smarter than I am, you see. And I pick their brains and I ask them questions. What can I do here? How can I make this better? How can I make this? That's what I did with these storybooks. You know, how, what, tell me, show me. I'm an eager learner and you do the same thing. I'm not mad, said Prissy. Neither am I, agreed Stubby. We learned an important lesson. Now everyone laughed about what had happened. Thank you for helping us learn how foolish it is to be proud and stubborn, said Prissy. Stubby looked around and noticed someone was missing. Where's the wolf, he asked. The forest friends were scared. What wolf? You know, said Stubby, that mean-looking wolf that chased the baby kitten. The forest friends were puzzled. We didn't send a wolf, said Bucky Beaver. Stubby looked at Prissy and said, Then you really did save the little baby kitten. You're a hero, said Ricky Rabbit. All the forest friends clapped their hands and shouted, Prissy is a hero! Hooray! Stubby walked over to Prissy and said, Prissy, you moved, but you sure didn't lose. What did Stubby say to Prissy? Hi, Juliet. You did move, but you sure didn't lose. Wow, <laughs> what a change. Now he's complimenting his sister. Before he was so stubborn, he said, to him, oh boy, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to talk. And now he's complimenting his sister. Uh-oh. When's the last time you complimented your sister or your brother? Wow. <laughs> About five hours ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, that's very important to learn to do that, to compliment others when they do something good. Good job. Very good. And to learn to do that. Stubby is learning a very important lesson in life. I hope you learn the lesson too. One by one, the forest friends left. Then Papa, Mama, Stubby, and Prissy went into their house. What a day, said Papa as he sat down to relax. What a day. Then Papa noticed that the front door was open. Would someone please close the door for me, he asked. With a bounce, two young cubs raced to the door. Yes, Stubby and Prissy had learned their lesson. And now, an award-winning song from Character Kids. So stubborn trying to get your own way. Don't be so stubborn. Pull together and work and a play. Don't be so stubborn. Do your part and make a better day. Sharing and caring is the only way. When there's a job that needs to be done, don't wait for someone else to be there. Just step on up and do your part. You can make a difference, give it all of your heart. So stubborn trying to get your own way. Don't be so stubborn. Pull together and work in a play. Don't be so stubborn. Do your part and make a better day. Sharing and caring is the only way. Sometimes we'd rather do our own thing, you know. So stubborn, trying to get your own way. Don't be so stubborn. Pull together and work in a play. Don't be so stubborn. Do your part and make a better day. Sharing and caring is the only way. Don't be so stubborn. Don't be so stubborn, trying to get your own way. Don't be so stubborn. Pull together and work in a play. Don't be so stubborn. Do your part and make a better day. Sharing and caring is the only way. 
sharing and